Hello, welcome to the Creativity Theory Podcast. I'm your host, Cameron Smith, and today my guest is Harrison Friedman. Um, before we get into it, I don't uh, have an ad, but I am going to make one up, uh, a little improv style. <laughs> Shh, ads. This is really important to the company. Hey there, travelers, people that like to travel. Um, have you ever heard of Travelocity? Well, you should use our website because you can type in whatever destination you're looking to go to, and we can find you really good deals on flights and hotels. Whether you're looking to travel to the great uh, city of Hawaii, or you're looking to go to the Bahamas or the Virgin Islands or the beautiful country of Italy or perhaps Israel or Palestine, <laughs> no matter where you're trying to go, if you're looking to go specifically to Gaza anytime soon, uh, we can get you a nice cheap deal on a hotel. Hotels are going for $10 in Gaza right now. That's 10 USD. Uh, go to uh, Expedia or Travelocity.com backslash Gaza discount deals 2023. <coughs> Sorry, I have AIDS. <laughs> and use promo code CUM. You can get 20% off that $10 hotel. All right. Well, uh, Harrison Friedman is a friend of mine, a comedian. Um, and I've been on his podcast a couple times before Jew and on, if you want to check that out, yeah. um, Jews are kind of in trouble right now. Oh, what yeah, do you, what yeah. you say? Did what, you, what do I do? I'm speaking for all of them right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pull, pull the mic a little more, yeah, like, yeah, make yeah. it face okay, you yeah. a little more, like yeah, yeah. twist it. Yeah. This twisted like this. Yeah. Like, all right. Like it's like a dick that you're about to suck. <laughs> all right. Is that good? Yeah. It's better. Okay. And you can just leave, you don't have to hold it like <laughs> that. <laughs> I feel like being held hostage. Uh, but yeah. Harrison wanted to use the platform today to maybe apologize yeah. to Hamas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to apologize to them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry we're getting in the way. A, you know what I mean? You know, I don't know. I, I, that, felt, that was going nowhere. I just, you know. Well, I'm saying you got three cameras yeah, 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 here. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Here, here's the thing, man. Like. When are they just going to turn the Gaza Strip into a spirit Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it, it, like there's not like it, it's it's like you're not taking the over and under. You're going to bet like if it's if you're betting on this, if you're gambling mm -hmm. on this, like wars, you're going to pick Israel. Like we back there's I'm sorry. Like, I feel bad. Like no one's rooting for the losing team, but like everyone that like wants to have performative empathy. Right. Yeah, I'm not following any of this. Really? You yeah. don't like, like, obviously, like, I don't know, like, Palestine, like, should exist. And you said Israel or Palestine. So you sound like you're in a two state solution. You sound like you care about these people. How dare you? I, I, no, I, it's, it's that I don't, I don't really know which way to swing. I don't know who to root for. You know? I mean, I feel kind of the same about really? the Israel Palestine really? thing it's, as it's I do. It's like attention to you. You don't know which side to go on. Yeah, I just don't know. It feels like a lot like Team Edward, Team oh, Jacob. Yeah, it does. Kind of it does? Okay. I'm, just like, I'm just not familiar with the Twilight series, so it doesn't make sense for me okay. to pick. Okay, I haven't dug into who's them. the jacked werewolf and who's the the twink vampire. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of feel if I'm just going intuitively again, haven't dug into the books, haven't dug into the Israel yeah, yeah, Palestine yeah, yeah. conflict too much. Um, I don't know. I'm getting twink vampire vibes really? from Israel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm asking you this because, you know, you, you've you said that you're Christian like on and off stage to me, you know, like you, you believe in God. I don't know what denomination you are, but you kind of present yourself somewhat religious. Am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't pick a, a specific denomination. I kind of yeah. like, um, and I would identify as Christian to the degree that if I am going to intentionally engage with a specific religion and read text for the sake of gaining that kind of religious wisdom or just just that kind of religious engagement for the sake of having that as a part of my life i think that there is um a, a good reason to pick one and i think the reason i pick that one is really because of a number of factors one 
It was what I was raised in. And there's a level of unconscious programming that's already tied to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a cultural and regional mm-hmm. thing. Like For we, sure. we are in the American West in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's very ingrained in our sociocultural way of engaging with each other. The sociocultural ethos, the Judeo Christian ethos is very much <laughs> like embedded. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's just one of those things where it's like, once you start to feel like your values or morals are beginning to get uprooted because you're looking to yourself and your ego too much for like, what is right? What do mm. I want? And you're looking too much to desire and, and that kind of thing where, um, I think when you, yeah, you have a specific canonical thing. It doesn't mean I don't ever look at anything else other than Christianity, though. It just means it's the main source. Yeah, you're brought up. I, I think I relate to you the same way where I grew up, like, just in this community. Mm. And I don't know. There's a little bit of fear of, like, leaving the community in terms of, like, oh, if I don't marry a Jewish woman, I won't be happy. If I don't keep kosher, I won't be happy and healthy. And like, if I don't do Shabbat, I'll be disconnected with mm. everything else. Like it's always the what if and you're like spiraling if you don't have that security. So there, I feel like there needs to be a good balance. Like whether it's like a mezuzah or like you have like a cross, you just, you're aware of a, of a presence of a God because I don't know, there's, we live in a secular society. We live where it is freedom of religion, but you know, we're so hyper-focused on separating church and state, which I agree on. But mm. for I, the individual, it, it's a great thing to have. I, the more I've actually thought about that, because for the longest time, it always seems so obvious to me separating church and state was a good idea. But the more I've kind of come to thinking about it the way I do now, I don't know for sure that that was the greatest idea. Because I think it's one of the reasons our state has become so morally corrupt because we've separated <laughs> like you know uh, dude dude i'm not i'm not gonna tell you you're wrong like it's but a lot I, of people I, will agree with you yeah but i also don't think that just to 100 percent flip it back to okay we're really tying the things back together i don't know if that's really the right move you know because i think that will invite other problems that you know are, are the inverse of the situation where they are separated yeah. um so I'm not saying it's like, oh, this is obviously the better solution. I just I can see a really strong argument for like, mm, you know, our state might actually be a little bit better if we were like intentionally um, content because there are like accidental and like passive values from that Judeo Christian ethos which are embedded in the of state. Of course, but we are a secular society, as you pointed yeah, out. There's so, no multiple. There's no polame right. and all that shit. So yeah. the individuals operating within it don't really have much of a conscious reason to tie a lot of their virtuous or moral decisions in their um, lawmaking or. Uh, you know, these kinds of political conversations, they're not consciously rooting or embedding or aiming to do that when they're, they're going about shaping the state. Yeah. But I think if they did, we might have a better state, a a more, um, canonical and harmonious type of state. I I don't think a lot of politicians are upfront with their faith. Right. Right. And I also think that kind of bothers me, man. I'm I'm pretty transparent with people and I, I want to like recognize when I do wrong and things like that. I'm not even a fucking politician. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We're not like I don't know, we do stand up and shit, which is fucking way different than that. Like you have to care if people. I barely care if people like me. Mm. I, I I care that people see that I have good character. Mm. Not if they like me, just know that like I genuinely have good intentions. That's weird if someone would identify you and go, "He has good character, but I don't like him." Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. A, oh no, I, I I know my like. A fucking like rabbi like doesn't like any of the things I post that that could be perceived as pro-Palestinian. You're like connected to your rabbi yeah, on social dude. media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you know he doesn't me. like it? Does he say stuff? He too? says he's just like yeah, actually it is. Yeah, you know? and I'm like, all right, sure, whatever. But you know, I'm like, hey, I'll see it like Shabbos once a month or whatever, and uh, like the holidays, mm. get a good kosher meal makes me feel like I'm at home, even though I'm you know hundreds of miles away. It just uh, I don't know. It's good to have the tradition and. I don't know, man. It's what I grew up around, so I'm used to it. Yeah. It's fucking... Yeah. I don't know what questions you got, but hit yeah. me with them. Well, no, I, I don't have any... Sp- we're just kind of a free yeah, flowing yeah, conversation yeah. here, but I, I do feel like the point that we're kind of making here about having something 
um, that's already decided on to yeah. look back to when we're, we're feeling like we're morally or spiritually coming apart. Yeah. It's of course there's not one single path to get to spiritual peace, yeah, but course. it's good to have a main one that you've just decided on and that you're not in this space of indecisiveness. Yeah. Like, Ooh, I don't know. Do you think, uh, yeah. Do you think it helps your moral code? Yeah, I mean, again, it's and I, it's this balancing of like you don't want to be so dogmatically attached that yeah. you can't dare look at anything else or think that there are other ways. Yeah. But I think that there is also something about intentionally holding one that you look to when you are in that time of needing to come back to center. Mm. Um, and it's because the decisions. There are very complex in terms of what to think or how to be and how to go about any given situations that there's like a metaphorical map within embedded in these texts for right all these decisions are made for you already because of the history and culture behind it where if you put all that weight on your own individual ego shoulders it's just too much it's right. too much for a person and they collapse under that or they just make bad decisions and they have an inflated sense of yeah. ego where they look to themselves too much for this kind of thing yeah exactly that and also like it can go down it goes down like i see so many people leave or like abuse drugs like there's mm -hmm. like like people snap man People yeah. snap from being repressed too much, and I don't know. If, like, I, I'm I'm glad that I, because I almost served in the IDF, and I uh, I'm glad I got out. I had a fucking awful drinking problem. Uh, I ended up walking dogs for money, and then I ended up working as an assistant for a sports journalist, and mm -hmm. that's how uh, that's what got me through. And I don't know. I just I I felt like I was going into something I had no business going into as an American. Like I'm an American Jew. Like I'm an American first. Like I don't need to fight other people's war and shit like that. All, all that hippie bullshit. But it's true. I didn't feel it. I felt like it was an unfair fight. And um, I don't know. I'm taught. Like we're taught this whole time that this is our ho holy land, like ho holy land and shit. That we have to like protect it and like it's. Very much like George Zimmerman stand your ground for like a country. <laughs> it is. It is. Because people are like, they're bothered. Oh, they're the kids are, you know, biking on our side of the property or on our settlement. We have to, they don't let them use the bathrooms when they, they're like, they work construction and shit like that. Like how we look at like Hispanics here. Like that's what they kind of do. They do like labor jobs. They won't. I'm having a hard time following this. This no, is like Palestinians. This is fever dream. Sorry. Rant. Sorry right about here. this. Yeah. yeah. Palestinians. Right. Uh-huh. The West Bank. Okay. I don't know. You know where the West Bank is? I don't know anything about what you're saying. You know anything. That's so refreshing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I deal with like religious people that are like, eh, this is a problem. And then I'm like, I withdrew out of it. Mm. And it uh, it is very dogmatic, man. Mm. It is very dogmatic. And I'm with like a non-Jewish woman. I don't have to keep kosher. I did watch something interesting. Have you seen Oak John Netflix? What like Okja, no. but the it's like a it's about like pig farming and shit. Mm -mm. So it's basically about like the the meat industry and like how ah oh shit. Basically, how like a company built like feeds super pigs and tries to like okay. do like genetically engineered stuff, but they're like the size of hippos and shit. Mm -hmm. And one of them like gets like a blue rib and they like take it back to America. And they're trying to like cook it and shit like that. And this person like saves it. I'm spoiling the whole thing, but I was like. Man, maybe pigs are smarter than we think, and we, you know, it just gave me some moral. But I'm not like vegan or nothing. I know you're like a steak dude, but I just, hmm. I gotta. It, it just helps remind me like there's got to be uh, empathy and also like value in what we kill. Like they feel pain. We should enjoy this. We shouldn't just eat yeah, shitty meat and forget about it and go like, hmm. I don't know. Praying over your food felt like a very uh responsible thing it felt like a very yeah valuing the life yeah, that, that you're exchanging for your sustenance yeah yeah that sure. i that i 100 percent understood in culture mm -hmm. in all re religions they do it yeah they pray before their meals because it you don't get to eat every fucking day <laughs> and in america we're like fat as shit and mm -hmm. you know yeah it's like you guys aren't praying <laughs> maybe you pray a little bit that's some intermittent fasting you know yeah this yeah. is my fucking thoughts but yeah, that was quite a, a jump. Uh, that was a jambalaya. Of, sorry. No. Yeah. What, what do you think about praying before you eat? 
You know, I don't. Uh, I used to do it a lot more when I was younger. My grandpa was yeah. around, or like I was living with my grandparents, and my grandpa would make it a point to pray. Um, he had kind of just like a standard prayer that he'd do. Um, and then, you know, doing it at home was always fine. But then when we were out in public, I remember one time, uh, uh we were eating at like a breakfast place on Oak Island and, and my, my mom was with us and he started to do it like, all right, everybody like started to do his uh-huh. hands. And my mom was like, no, really? Yeah, like, let's not do this in public. What? You know? And like, uh, it's still the, very wholesome. Uh, but. It, it is wholesome. I mean, and at the time I was on my mom's side i was like thank god but <laughs> thank god we're not praying is he, but, poor old man i know oh, no. I, I feel bad now um about it because yeah i mean he you know um yeah i feel bad about that moment oh, now. i'm so sorry but um anyway i i agree with the sentiment like i think yeah. that praying i mean just integrating prayer in general i think yeah. is a good practice um mindfulness dude my well and, and uh i i heard this sentiment um recently about like you know bringing prayer and meditation together like prayer is talking to the other and meditation is listening to the other and i i do as i've gotten really experienced in meditation first before re like coming back to reintegrating prayer um i now uh when i pray there is a lot of meditative listening in between though i do also still have a meditation practice that's separate from it where it's just all i don't really think of the pure meditation practice necessarily as listening i, I feel it's more just like pure letting go of any sort of effort and it's just experiencing that source you know that it it re-energizes and you just come back to the center every time you're aware that you have lost that center are you a yoga guy i i do enjoy yoga and i have done it a number of times and i've had like little periods of Mm -hmm. where i'll do it regularly but i would not say i'm a yoga guy um i do like that form of exercise Um, but also when I do it, it's, I don't really lean into it as a replacement or a way of integrating Cause meditation. Cause it can be a personality. Yeah, it can. <laughs> I, I'm more, I'm more group it in with physical activity. That's like nice, it's, yeah. it's more, and I don't see, I don't. Are you embarrassed t- to do it in public? Um, yeah, I'm not, I have done, I've done hot yoga classes because I can't do hot yoga in my room no or house. Shit. I've never tried it. Is it, is it, it awesome? is intense. It is intense. Okay. Uh, Trish smart got me to go mm. a couple of times. And then like where, where we went, it was like Wilmington yoga center. They were doing like, uh, I think if you paid like 30 bucks, you could have 30 days of the month where like Ooh. you can come any day you want and get a class. So I, I did it as much as I could that month. Um, but I haven't really been back to do like a one off since then. And, um, I do like typically when I do yoga, I would prefer to like pull up a YouTube video and just do it privately in my room. Cause I don't, I don't like group sessions and going, mm. I don't like being around people. You might fart and it's not comfortable. It's not that. It's not that. It's just, I, I really like exercise to be private. Like yeah. I go to the gym to use the equipment, but I really, Who as much as I can socialize, that's insane. No, I don't socialize at all. <laughs> uh, but like as much as I can identify when the times are that no one's there, yeah. that's where I like to go. That's smart. But also I don't like to go really late at night or really early in the morning. So it's just kind of yeah. like, Are you playing a fitness guy. No, um, I go to access fitness now okay, because I can walk there. Nice. Yeah. You got to get ads from them. <laughs> is it, is it, I'm not running ads for yeah, Access no, no, Fitness. No, no. I don't know. What's the worst gym you've been to? Planet Fitness. <laughs> but that I haven't would, been to a ton of gyms. I would, yeah, I would go if they had a basketball court. I don't know. That's all I need. You know, it's just everyone goes to Planet Fitness. Yeah. Or the just, Y. The Y's great. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, the Y too. Yeah. What is it? They got. Uh, I will say this in locker rooms. I, I there's like an age you hit where you just free bird. You're just, you know, you don't wear talking about being in the locker room. Yeah. There's there's like a level of elderly. You know what I'm talking about? Never participate. Like I go to the gym in the clothes that I'm going to exercise in and I leave in the sweat. You don't show a lot of bird. You, if you do, you, I don't go in locker rooms. I have to because I change for like work or whatever. Mm. But like, I don't know. I feel like it's like they talk to you naked. I'm not having conversations naked with another man. Why not? I don't know. It feels like 
It's very Put on vulnerable. Clothes. You need yeah. you need a new level. Of, you should get naked too. <laughs> if you're fully clothed, when they start talking to you naked, just start peeling off and be like, "Let me meet you on your level, dude." And then just as you're talking, just start like playing with your dick. Like that just that, feels like, oh yeah, was, yo, you work for this company? It's like, like, no, dude, just put on some pants. Like this is, boy, things are getting really <laughs> intense in Gaza, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. All right, well, I don't really feel bad about them losing water. I mean, they're using the fucking pipes as pipe bombs. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He was like, well, don't shoot the human shields. That's what I'll play with my dick. I'm arguing with them. What about all those dead baby yeah, photos yeah, Ben yeah. Shapiro says? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Ben Shapiro just playing with his tiny dick. No. What if Ben Shapiro had a huge dick? <laughs> what, what was a huge black cock? <laughs> <laughs> but this is worth the trip. Yeah. Yeah. You drove, yeah. Harrison drove two and a half hours yeah. down here just to do this. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm so glad. You're like one of my favorite people in Wilmington. What the heck? Come yeah, on now. I know. I, yeah. No, what you do. And I, the characters is, uh, they're, I hope they don't stop. My, my question for you is, can we see new characters? I really would love to get back into doing sketches and short films and yeah. having the opportunity to do characters and i'm you know constantly re um visiting that idea and conversation with people but i don't know i um i have a lot that i'm juggling and i really could use some some focus and some action um i've also uh, i'm just horrible Adderall? No, no. no, but you said no. focus. I mean, that's that's a no, quick, that's a no, no, quick, no. cheap route. I don't no, think you're that. Guy. I mean, I mean, like an intentional sort of decision about ah. folk. Like, ah, okay, I have five projects. I'm like working on pre-production for which one am I going to go full force in producing? Ah. Which one am I going to make? Um, and that, you know, I just go through these ebbs and flows where it's like I spend a long time in this period where it looks like I'm doing nothing, and then suddenly I'll have a year or two streak where it's just one thing after another yeah. drops because all this like pre production work has been loaded up over time. And I think it's just a matter of um I think I have distinct periods of input where I'm just taking things in for education and inspiration and then just living life and absorbing real social situations yeah, and letting them develop and fall apart or whatever. And then, um, and then I have output where it's just like, I am in hyper productive mode and I do not have time for socializing. I don't have time you for have a vision, anything you have to get it done. Right? And I'll, I will let my, my bank account drain. I'll let my, I'll let my <laughs> yeah. health deteriorate, yeah, yeah, and, but yeah, I will yeah, yeah. get a lot of things uh, made and out. And I'll be happier. I'll be I, happier during be, that period. You'll be happier. And then there's I'll like. Feel, I'll seem way when, more when confident. Is the, when is the crash and burn though? The crash and burn happens. And you know it does. Um, It's when the last thing I put out is. And I don't have enough loaded up in the time. Like I just feel like, okay. It's just like an intuitive. What's next? I don't know. And then in that space of I don't know, you just enter back into the input phase to find out. You yeah. just keep, okay, well, time to socially engage again. Time to start listening to new music. Time to start watching new things. Time to start reading new books. Time, to, Yeah. Yeah. Man, I need I need that crash and burn to hit me earlier because I, I know I stretch myself too fucking thin. I just know I do. Yeah? Why do you say that? Oh, man. I You're telling me that you feel like you need to stop stand-up for a while. Yeah, I was telling you that earlier. And I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll do, I have I have goals and expert, but that doesn't... I don't know. I'll keep myself living. Like, I, I know, you know, the people that live, oh, live every day like it's your last. That's bullshit. You can't. It's a little of both. I mean, it's... Because it's, it's, I think, you know, it's a really good idea to think... Best case scenario, I'm going to live till I'm 80 yeah. and then have kind of a, a, a long term plan that, you know, you work out and like it, assuming I live to 80, this is what I want my life to look like. And the further into the future, the lower the resolution can be. It's just generally like this is kind of what I'm like in my 70s or but then like, you know, you're thinking more like in my, you know, the, the next two years of my 20s and then into my 30s. It's a higher resolution like no these things. I really want to complete this project and make sure this is out and I want to be here financially and like 
set these goals and break them down and all that and like have this plan. And then once you have that worked out, then each day, one, you know what your day and week and hour month by, needs yeah, to be hour filled by with. Hour. Yeah, so that you're hyper schedule. Yes. So that you're moving towards that. But on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, you need to become fully present and, again, live like, hey, I this might be the last day that I get to carry out this plan. Wow. But, <laughs> you know, that I get to move yeah, forward. Yeah, so, so you need to make yeah. sure that the process of moving towards that goal is as fulfilling as it can be. Now, you're going to have days of, you know, grinding and just being hard and yeah. difficult and dead, but it's way more fulfilling to be on that path that you've laid out for yourself than it is to seek that moment because a lot of people think that living in the moment thing means like oh well just you know revert course and you know, have a drink and go out and party and do take as much stimulants as you can to make your dopaminergic system yeah. please you like that that is the wrong way to go about doing it and a lot of people do that because they don't have the plan i've been just addicted to caffeine i'm gonna be honest yeah I'm me too decaf- yeah <laughs> <laughs> hashtag me too <laughs> hashtag me too um well yeah no i've been just doing a lot of too much caffeine i've stopped drinking you yeah, don't drink that much anymore. i have yeah. like literally one I've i miss, really I miss smoking it. weed but i'm i became i think I, I don't know if i became funnier from it or whatever but i just i need to find new ways to relax mm. you seem like a, a really you seem like you're really good at relaxing mm, yeah i would There's say difference between being lazy and being good at relaxing yeah, yeah. I um. Well, I don't. I try to keep my mindset proper. So even when difficult, horrible things happen, I know it is my responsibility to wrap my head around them in a way that is productive as fast as I can. Mm. I mean, like, you know, um, mm, I'm not going to use that example. Um. It's just kind of like, uh, like here's an example. Let's say the same problem of like, I have so many different things I want to do. Right. And it's amazing to have all that potential of the various things that I could do. But let's say I get in a car accident tomorrow and I lose my legs. That's going to really suck. That's going to be hard to wrap my head around looking at that in a positive way. But inevitably, I think the path to looking at it in a positive way is like, all right, there was five things that I really wanted to do and I'm spreading myself thin by trying to do all five of them. Three of them aren't viable anymore because I really need my legs to do them. So now I have two and I can really focus on those now mm. because the variables that are no longer, I can't get my legs back. You're so up. Yeah, you're just optimistic. Right. It's just like, yeah. it's like, oh, and it's like a realistic kind of optimism. It doesn't mean my life is so much better now that I don't have my legs. It just means like this is a plus my potential has been whittled down to two things. And rather than spreading myself thin over five things, I now have two that I can still do. And that allows me to put more mental focus into these things and probably get further along. You, you just, you're so a a quick and adaptive to change. It's, it's the very nice, clear thing to see. You got to be a friend of the unknown. Too many people, the known is there their only friend and when the unknown happens they just freak out and they can't handle I it i miss being unpredictable but i also miss being gen- gen- generally creative i feel like i've but so i've been like i've like pitched myself into like a demo does that make sense no i don't know what you mean you i don't know i feel like i demo? feel like i've just been this edgy free speech guy and stand up for fucking five years and i know i need to like grow my audience and shit like i did a uh, like a theater and it was uh it was one of those places where like we're on indigenous land and you know uh it had like the white supremacy must end in comedy and, and all that and mm. i'm like i don't know i'm i'm doing jokes about me you know yelling uh speaking french or no speaking english in a french accent would like that's gonna help or i don't know dry shit that i need to work on and stuff mm. like that and uh, I'm not saying it beats the hell out of me, but I like talk like I do dirty stuff there and they're like appalled, you know? Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I, I got to work on being a classy guy and all that other stuff, but maybe I'm not ready to be this button down. I always hated like the Seinfeld, like what's the deal with this? You know, or you can't take a left. You can be left behind. And mm. 
I don't know. I'm not ready to have dad jokes yet. And I see the guys of friends of mine that are like dad comedians mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh, I, you know, they're doing good in life. And maybe I should either a have a family or just be fucking happy where I am. And I'm picking probably the latter. Yeah. Well, I think there is something to be said that I think that the relationship and the family and the children can be a really motivating factor. Yeah. One, and just bringing you close to the essence of life and love. Yeah. That's um, more important. And meaning. <laughs> yeah. And then that, that bleeds out into the rest of your life outside of the family. Like I definitely see a lot of these years since my last relation or, you know, the one relationship I was in seven years ago, mm -hmm. I didn't understand the value of that thing while I was in it. And, it's been something that has been a slow burner coming back around in all these years of like self help and self actualization, self development where like, you know, you make the mistake of thinking you have to be alone for that in order for yourself to you have to suffer in silence. <laughs> right. And it's, it's not, it's not true because you're really one, unless you literally go to the woods and isolate yourself, you're not alone. Um, what you actually end up doing is having just bad relationships as a result of trying to avoid just trying to and, fill the void. And yeah. I just mean like friendships and, oh, and potential romantic. I mean, just everything. I and mean, that's, that's it. I just would constantly push the various things away. Um, and it was, it's really only been in the recent years that I've realized, no, no, I need to stop like putting all this attention inside myself because this yeah. is this is the ego caving in this is making things worse this is worse. there's nothing to figure out here it's it's to realize that your essence truly is the oneness of everything and that you're completely integrated and inseparable from everything else and the more you try to resist the worse things get so it's like selflessness is the true <laughs> it's the it's the true antidote to this figuring yourself out ah. and uh, the the uh. the cage and the blindness of narcissism is so hard to see when you're in it oh my it's God. so hard to see the the prison that you reinforce I, I, have, I have a question for you this is i don't know if this is a little off topic but who do you feel confident and confiding in like uh, being cameron smith because you, you you know it's there's a lot of people that you know if they see you on, on stage and in general they i i would assume you would be an abrasive person and you and yeah. you come you're, it's it's like night and day i feel like it's just whenever it's uh, i i you know it's an intuitive thing it's i feel it out because i'm not just going out just being vulnerable with anyone yeah. but i don't feel like i don't feel like i really have um a difficult time trusting people by being vulnerable and i don't think it's because I, I don't have any sort of ideology that would um make me think that it benefits me to protect and hide anything yeah you know like i think it's uh you know the best way to defend yourself from all these fears around like ooh, alexa's always listening to you and your phone's always listening yeah, to you yeah, and the nsa yeah, it's like yeah, okay yeah. well how about who you are behind closed doors isn't someone you're ashamed of being yeah how about that? <laughs> and, and, and and seriously, it's yeah. just like, look, yeah. fine, about, put, bug my room, put a camera in there. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 maybe you'll hear me say some jokes yeah. and, and some shit that yeah. I wouldn't say in front of everyone, but that's yeah. your fault for putting the fucking bug in my room. Yeah. But in terms of other than that, it's like, um, I just, I, I find it very rewarding and the right thing to do that when someone takes an interest and they're willing to listen and they're curious, it's like, it doesn't benefit you to hold back and be cryptic and mysterious. Yeah. Um, it, it really kind of, a uh, lot of people treat, treat conversations like chess games. Yes, you know, they definitely, do. What can I do for you? What can you do for them? Oh, All I, that other shit. Uh, yeah. Identifying uh, the people that play power games uh, are really, it's uh, tough. It's fucking, but and, 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 and like how do you dude. and like how do you deal with those people? Because to me, what I've learned is like I know how to play those games, yeah. and I can play them. And sometimes I do yeah. just to like kind of show some teeth and yeah. like, look, I know what you're doing, and I can do it back to you. <laughs> I've seen it, dude. We've talked about this. Yes, yeah. but yeah. ultimately, I think the moral thing to mm -hmm. do and the best thing you can do, moral code, dude. God, is, yeah, is to is to just be present with like just not play into it and to just like when someone's trying to be cryptic and hold back and and play games with you it's the best thing water you, off the duck's back no is just what? be honest and vulnerable with them extend your hand out to them and yeah. if they don't take it then fine but um 
you know, people are complicated and they have the reasons for living life that way and seeing life through that lens and, um, you know, being stuck inside of whatever sort of protective veil, self-defense ego cage they're in. I feel like I I need to be more empathetic, but I, I'm unfortunately I'm like too honest with people because like I, I think I don't know man I, I I made fun of a drug addict the other night I felt bad about this mm. I, I I definitely did because like my 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 uh, aunt uh, overdosed on like parks and sh- I, I don't know like I just I'm around like I know that behavior mm. of like someone who's like either like on uppers or downers or whatever the fuck but um I don't know man my, my question for you is uh where do you where do you get genuine empathy from? Like, what what makes you sad, and what what makes you understand people outside of not even conversations, but like, I don't know, like, like I don't know what my question is, but like, what what gives you empathy? I don't know if I can point to what gives me empathy. Yeah. I mean, one, it's I remember many years ago the word empathy entering my field of attention, and yeah. then. You know, I think in my like when you first met me when I was in those college years yeah. doing stand up, I think I appeared to be a very unempathetic person yes. on the surface. But then when you would get to know me, you'd be like, oh no, he does have an empathetic side. Yeah. He just doesn't act like act like that's his essence or anything. Yeah. It's I think it's just part of of being a human yeah. that we have the capacity for empathy. Now, and I was talking about this with someone recently. I don't, I have the capacity for empathy and I think I can be incredibly empathetic. Um, but I do, I do not let it run me. Like I do mm. not, because people will be pathological and they will use emotional appeals and they will attempt to manipulate yeah. you. And emotions are, can be quite unreasonable. Yeah, they can. Um, so I think it's important to have that capacity to empathize with anyone, even the worst Pe- people. People will put your problems onto them as well. Like it's your, it's like your fault that you're addicted to math. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, right. So, and, 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 and that's true. And I think that's true. It's like, I can look at someone who has a horrible drug addiction and I can empathize and be like, that's, that sucks. Yeah. Like, and I feel, if you're fucked up, I would make fun of you and it'd be like, what are you doing? Like, I, I feel like, cause I can't, cause I know what's going on. Yeah. Like people were like, oh, just let him do his thing. Just let him not up. No, fucking we have to wake him up and get him some Narcan. And Right, exactly. There's a level of, of empathizing and feeling bad for them, but there yeah. is also a level of like, no, this is a stupid thing that they're doing and that <laughs> yeah. it, it is their fault yeah. largely. They yeah. have a lot of responsibility here yeah. and like they're just avoiding the withdrawals. The withdrawals really suck and, and yeah. it's, it's an avoiding contending and confronting their problems that are their own but also there is a, another level to it where it's the community around them and the people that uh, care about them yeah, it is yeah, on them yeah, to yeah, push yeah, that yeah, person yeah, yeah. and not be someone well let them do their thing yeah. they're they're their own person they have their own autonomy and they can make their own decisions like that's really actually a fucked up thing to yeah, do to, a person, to, to yeah. someone that's close to you is it's 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 your yeah. responsibility to take care of the people that are around you and i think we do in this this sort of non religiously tied secular society we have no values derived from scientific facts that tell us to look out for the people in that yeah. way we we are promoting so much about our individual freedom and so much about our autonomy yeah. and then we ruin it with our free will we it's all our decisions right we just well, we just lose sense of of community and a sense of our relationships and stuff we just devalue them mm-hmm. and again it is it's this very narcissistic culture that we reinforce it's it's everyone out for themselves and everyone's on their own and you know i just again there's something to having an introverted period to discover this for yourself kind of like how people tell you money does not bring you happiness of course right um you can be as rich as fuck and still miserable but still at the same time if you've been poor your whole life like "Mm, i'd like to find that out for myself yeah exactly (laughs) so again it's like Hey, you don't need to to go cave inward and be completely like lone wolf style. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just. I'd not... rather be funny than famous, but I wouldn't rather you know, fucking. Right. I, I'd have some integrity, but I don't need to like. You know what I mean? The yeah. clout chasing ideas. Yeah. Very infectious. But to complete the thought, it's Sorry. it's it's that, just like the you need to experience the 
you know, wealth doesn't bring you happiness kind of thing for yourself, you should probably, it might be worth experiencing Being lo- sober, loneliness yeah. or, or sobriety or whatever. Yeah. These things aren't the answer yeah. to whatever it is that you're trying to work out. Yeah. I th- you're right. I think, I think it's not that I don't have uh, empathy. It's more sympathy. Like I hate feeling sorry for people. I'd rather like help that I I don't know if it's something in my DNA like what can we do to help this that the, like where's the plan? I'm always where's the plan? Well, how can it get done? What what needs to be done? And all what? right, well, let, let's cut this out and then go to the next thing. Uh it's it's oh, what can I cut out? It's and also I have to think what can I do better in terms of the creative world or the, the work world. It's what 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 are the healthy habits? Yeah, I think it is important to be pragmatic. Yeah in these situations where it's just like feeling the empathy is, is not enough. It doesn't matter if like you feel bad for people or you're vocal on fucking Twitter or Facebook or TikTok (laughs) about these issues. What matters is like the ether. What about your immediate community? Is there anyone that you know directly that's suffering from this cause that you can go have a direct impact that's within your reach and capacity Mm -hmm. rather than just be someone who's virtue signaling (laughs) online or just sitting by yourself in your room thinking like I'm such a good person because I care about this other person that's suffering you know it's uh, yeah yeah. Yeah. we're just we're just floating dude you know we're just we're just existing we're we're watching it from a from another TV screen it feels like but uh, you know you can shut it off and you can touch grass I love that philosophy just there you know dude just touch grass instead or whatever i was like yeah touching grass is awesome you know being outside yeah i do like being outside being yeah. in nature i used to not really yeah. you're an indoor kid yeah mm-hmm. Why? Right. Well, indoor kid pull down the blinds really and you were you were big into videos early on so you were Vi- big in video production. games first really it was video mm-hmm. games i was for a big you? video game kid in like elementary school and what would school. you play Hmm. I mean, I got a PS one before I was like five, Jesus you know, Christ. so I was playing like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot. Okay. Um, and then like PS two, um, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, you got Grand. How old were you playing Grand Club. Theft Auto? I was young. I was in elementary <laughs> school. Um, and I loved Super Smash Brothers Melee. Of course. GameCube. Classic. Um, yeah, and then like I did, I played some of the Call of Duty games. I never really liked never, them that yeah, much. I don't, I never saw you as that better first person shoot. Like I didn't really like first person shooters so much, but I did like Resistance, that that game that came out like with like one of the first games that came out with PS3. I don't remember it. It was just like it was like a, a really dark horror kind of like alien first Ooh, person shooter. Cool. It was good, yeah. um, and then uh, I liked Destiny that came out with the PS4. I heard of Destiny. Yeah, that that was fun. But again, these are Halo very, kid. I feel like you were a Halo no, kid. No, no you never were? An, never an Xbox person. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. And I like the Sims. I did play the Sims. <laughs> you like the Sims a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I would always so just funny. create people and make them fuck and <laughs> bur- burn them alive and make them <laughs> trap them in like a door a room with no doors and. Make them starve. Yeah, just make them starve in a grocery store. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was just like, a big, the most it was, fucked up places to starve too. It was just a big like social experiment. <laughs> the Stanford prison experiment. Yeah, <laughs> Sims. Um, this is this is great. This is I I I feel like I didn't bring the heat. I've just been kind of you know throwing up softballs. But this is this is what it needs to be. You know, sometimes yeah. you can't carry it all. You know, I felt like a. a, a a lot when people see me, I have to turn it on because I, I do sale, I do all this other shit, and I'm like, oh, I got you this. Oh, oh, how's your day been? And I feel like that'll just intensify more if I have kids. Maybe it won't. Maybe I just be like, ah, oh, fuck you. I got kids. I got to deal with this instead. Mm. And that's kind of, that 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 does sound appealing to me. Yeah, to be like tuning out just because I have kids and I can use that as an excuse because I can barely use my girlfriend as an excuse. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you and Caitlin been together? Fuck, um, like four years, man. Mm, yeah. yeah, still going good. Still going great. I'm about to go uh, see her tonight. So nice, nice. Yeah. Is she here? No, she uh, she moved down to Savannah with me. So I gotta oh, I gotta start to playing Savannah. Things. Yeah, I live in Savannah now. Savannah, Georgia. Yes, sir. What? Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, fucking uh, May, I think. So wait, you came from Raleigh? Or you're visiting Raleigh yeah, right I, now? I had visited my folks. You were on the way back. So you know, I was like, I want to do cameras thing anyway, and you know. A little sentimental about Wilmington anyway, so I, you know, thought, hey, I'll do that. And I plus I got booked for a show, which I thought I was getting paid for, did not. 
who gives a shit? I got to do a good amount of time and see where I'm at. Hmm. And uh, yeah, man, it was a uh, it was a good it was a good uh, learning experience, and I got to see my folks, and you know, I don't get to see them much. So, so when you said those things that you brought me. Yeah, the that, butter cookies. Those are my mom's. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. thought you, when you said folks, you were talking about folks cafe up the street. No, no, no. They were no, like, no, I didn't no. know they had these. No, no, no. I want to give you some butter cookies. Okay, well, yeah, that's of course. Yeah, that's a nice gift. Thank you, uh, dude. You can't go empty-handed into someone's house. It's a fucking manners, dude. You gotta. That's you the. Know, that's that's the, class. That's the Judeo-Christian that's, values. That is Judeo-Christian <laughs> values. <laughs> That's why I don't know if the fucking Palestinians are walking into my house. They're not. I they better bring some terrorist peanut butter, some hummus, <laughs> some Hamas, some Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We're on fire, bring baby. Bring some hummus to the Hamas. Oh man, yeah. I, uh, I, I did I tell you? You know this about me? I think I, I took Arabic in in college. Uh, I, think I think you mentioned you something about you knowing get, I, Arabic. I can read it and shit like that, and. I don't know, man. I uh, it's it's sad because I taught ESL to a Palestinian woman, mm. and uh, uh, shout out to Sawa. Um, well, I talked about the, the conflict. He's like, "Oh, you you're gonna have a bachelor's. You have an education. Like, why why would you go back to the West Bank?" And she's like, "It's our it's our home. We will die here." And I'm like, "It's so bleak and sad. It's very like Russian and Eastern European to be like, this is our life. We die like th- we live like this. We die like this." Ha- has she been texting you lately and be like, "Hedison, why you do this to us?" <laughs> That'd be so funny. That'd be so fucking funny if she did. But tell no. them to stop. Tell your people. <laughs> tell them, people. yeah. Like, Set us free. <laughs> like I just press a button in all events. That's fucking great. No, Hedison, turn um, the electricity back on. <laughs> you didn't pay a power bill. <laughs> now she's now she's yeah. saying, Hedison, <laughs> please turn the water back on. <laughs> Cut that shit. <laughs> Why are we no, doing Asian? Then, Why are we doing Asian now? I know we just devolved into that. Uh, yeah, I, I, you've been watching any Chinese, Japanese things recently? All the time, really. You <laughs> no. don't seem you don't seem like an anime guy. I'm you, not. You, okay, good. Yeah, that's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I'm glad I didn't become a nerd. Mm. I think I was close after basketball and and stand stand up has a lot of nerds in it. Mm-hmm. And it's not that it's a bad thing to be like a nerd. It's just there's like a time. It's conversational. So you have to appeal to a lot of people. Yeah. And a lot of people are not into fucking uh, Marvel at 35. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, it's one of those things like thinking about because there are a lot of nerds in stand up. And I feel like another really common theme with, you know, comedians is that a lot of them were heavily bullied throughout school <laughs> i was bullied for the right reasons yeah and you know and i think a lot of them have come around to having like a view like that uh, it's yeah. so funny like one of the reasons i feel out of place in the comedy community like i feel very much like a comedian yeah. but i feel very out of place in the community is like i'm like i was a bully <laughs> I was just like, I yeah. was. oh I, dude i i'm surprised you were a bully how dude, tell me how you bullied not, people not, not a not like a horrible like it was always psychological and verbal like uh, I, I never like i know i don't see you Given wedgies, I probably yeah, shit. I probably yeah. and any time I got physical with anyone, it was like twice. I I remember punching a kid in the face because he was annoying me on the bus. He was like in my ear. What was he doing? Making, just making loud noises in my ear or something. <laughs> so I was like, if you do that again, I'm going to punch you. And then he did it again, and I punched him right in the face. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, like, you clocked me, dude. Dude, uh, there's this. I gotta look him up, but there's this kid named Jonathan. He was like, he thought it was so funny. He would like scream kike at me like everywhere. <laughs> Like he would be in the hallway. He's like, God. I was like, What? What do you do? Where'd you learn that word? And he's like, I googled it, and he was like, I know what it means? It's a slur about you. It's your, you know, thing. It was yeah. the only time. It was barely. It was the most anti-Semitic someone's ever been to me. I think ever in my life. Mm. So, if you're watching this, if you're an American Jew, you have not faced any persecution. Anyway, <laughs> it's so fucked up to say, but uh, uh, no, he was like, just kept calling me Kike, and uh, we're at in a classroom and the teacher walks out and he says hey kike hand me a tissue and i say you call me kike one more time i'm gonna hit you in this textbook hit you with this textbook so hard and he says kike get me a tissue and i just just did it in front of everyone and i got like detention it was it was was fun yeah it was worth it it was it was there's things like that that gave me like a weird like sense of justice and dopamine Uh uh-huh and like he was fine and shit. Like he's I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but he's still alive. Like he's not dead from it. But um, you know th- things like that and watching 
clips of landlords evicting their tenants relaxes the fuck out of me. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I saw you tweet something like that. Yeah, but it's it's true. I've been watching him at work to, and it's distressing me. Mm. It, I don't know, man. It's it, I could be fucked up. At least I'm not watching like Palestinians being tortured or something like that. Yeah. You know, I just, I like a sense of justice. That's not justice. Uh, I'm going to just be real. Like, I'm not like being, I'm not, I don't want like virtue signal or nothing. I feel like I've been doing a lot of that in this podcast. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I would call it, but okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe schizophrenic ranting. Could be yeah, horror. definitely that. that. Definitely that. Yeah. Where do we go from here? I don't know. Don't put that shit Fuck, on me. I don't know. Yeah. Where do we go from here? You've been leading this thing. I have dude. been leading this. I, t- I, I didn't want to take over your podcast. I'm very I sorry. hope you do because <laughs> I, <laughs> we're phoning it in. Yeah, we're phoning it in. Uh, no, we were talking about bullying. That's what it was. And before that, we were talking about you, your relationship. Oh yeah, yeah, so Kaylin. Kaylin. And it's good. I, I remember going to that because you were talking about having kids. Are you guys like having that conversation? Mm, uh, we're, we're talking about getting married. Getting married. Okay, getting married. that's, that's first. definitely yeah. That's for, oh yeah, that's way first. Yeah, she's not. She's not gonna be a baby mama. Mm. No, no, she's too classy for that. I mean, how soon in the future do you feel marriage is? What are those conversations? Oh, like like, like next year. Okay. Yeah, like just at least engaged and shit like that. You saving up to buy that ring? Saving up to buy that ring. The jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dog whistles on this podcast. Yeah. It's too many. You gotta cut it out. <laughs> you gotta cut it. Cut it out. The jewelry. Be nice to Jews. <laughs> be nice to us. Seriously, be nice to us. Don't you have a new podcast now? It's You're called not- Goy Slop. Okay, so why did you decide to stop being Jew and on and be Goy Slop? Because uh Juanon is uh is a little played out man it's Q- QAnon already happened in the capital right you know what i mean i it's, feel like Juanon is still the superior you think, name you think it should be i think goy slop is too um diatribe i don't even know that word means. yeah i don't either i i've Fun. heard it but i don't think yeah. it's used right yeah it's not it's probably not used right damn i need to use words with friends again i think diatribe is a noun and you used it as like an adjective probably fuck do you want to look it up right now sure go ahead all right, all right diatribe i feel like i feel like diatribe is like like it is a a rant or something like you went on that diatribe about that's that's my intuition but i could very much what's it say no i I turned off my phone for this podcast oh you did yeah i'm I'm trying to be respectful i don't know we'll let the people at home look yeah yeah tell us what diatribe means let us know in the comments (laughs) let us know in the comments like comment and subscribe yeah i could you ever see yourself being a twitch streamer i I don't want that for yeah you're too cool for that dude I, am. Not, I mean, you're not too cool, but like there's like an age <laughs> of like, I feel like I'm out of that demo. Like I'm not like, I don't want to be like an old guy that tries to pretend to be cool. Like I that could has put like on some friends. big white chuggy headphones and just start fucking, yeah. I, you know, it'd be really great to be a Twitch streamer, but then like do, you know, a lot of Twitch streamers, like what they do is that it's, you know, reaction videos or they're yeah. commenting on yeah. or doing commentary over whatever is popular or, or other things. So like Hassan Piker. Oh, okay, yeah, right. if I just started yeah. doing commentary <laughs> over Hassan Piker, <laughs> doing commentary <laughs> over other shit, some inception shit, man. I like yeah, it. That would be fucking great. I would totally. I fucking hate that guy. You really don't like him? I think he's a fucking douchebag, and he's stupid. It's your, I think he's CIA. Could might be. be. Could be. I don't know. We we might be. CIA. I love that Sam Hyde was like oh, call, calling him yeah, out to like that fight was him. Some Andy Kaufman shit. I that love was. that. Yeah. Yeah, but apparently, like my my girlfriend like showed me something. He's like he's racist, and I was like I don't know if he didn't he donate to the Daily Stormer. Who Sam Hyde? Hyde? Yeah, probably. probably I mean, yeah. He does all sorts of wild <laughs> yeah, shit. Dude. Yeah, exactly. He is funny. It, it, he is so funny. The paradigm shift. Yes, paradigm shift is classic. You wish, you wish you could have come up with something that diatribe. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we talked about love. You still believe in love? Barely. You still believe in love, uh, Cameron? I do. That's good. Haven't uh, quite a. Sound like Jeff Goldblum. Oh. Complicated experience okay. with it right now. Both very good and very bad. Okay. Can't talk about it. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you on the apps and shit? Are you on the, the no. fucking? Okay. Try not, that's good. That's good. I do have a joke hinge profile. I mean, it's like my face cropped over like a muscular black body. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like just in the, in the, what, what the description uh, saying like, <laughs> you know, we'll get along if you let me manipulate you, <laughs> gaslight you. And... <laughs> it's, it's funny that, that people end up matching with me unhinged dude that's what i call it unhinged yep yep 
Um, yes, I believe in love. I think, I think love is, I think it's a very important component of life. And I think that we, I think it's very true to, to think of God as love and to think as of love as your truest, deepest essence. And I think that the proper way of living life is to nourish and expand and express that love. And I think that there's all sorts of wisdom embedded in the, the religion and the culture about how we as limited human beings um, can can uh, properly engage with that love. Yeah. Because I think that there's a lot of sick hijacking of the morality that's tied to love and the different kinds of love. Uh, because some people take that, you know, love is sacrifice, man. Love is love is sacrifice. And that sacrifice is completely tied to the fact that, you know, God is infinite and, but we are, we are God with a limiter. Yeah. Like I like that you're doing rap hands at me. (laughs) (laughs) Bang, bang. All right. right, Continue. Sorry. And, and it's that limitation that, that restricts our time and our space. And much like I've given this analogy before, uh, I I think you said you listen to the Cordero podcast. It was an analogy. I like, kind of made up on the fly with him in conversation prior to the podcast. But it's about like, you know, some of these like very broadly spiritual types, Mm -hmm. you know, they don't do the thing of picking one religion, right? They, they do. They, they think like, okay, religion has value and spirituality has value, but, um, I'm not going to pick a single one and I'm just going to kind of smorgasbord, different values and wisdoms from different places and just kind of like Ah. DJ this sort of body myself. And it's, I I compared it to the major religions and spiritual sources are like different trees in a forest and you're a human in that forest. Different isms to follow. And the spiritual person's going around and and whenever you hug a tree, the longer you hug a tree, the more of that specific tree's wisdom you absorb and becomes entangled with your soul, right? The more your soul harmonizes with it. And I think what the spiritual, the broadly spiritual people do is they go up to each tree and hug it for a little bit, right? Yeah. But they never go that deep with one tree. Mm. And I think a lot of this like um, polyamorous type ideology or this never wanting to tie yourself down to a single person has very much to do with the, I mean, ADHD culture of us having infinite options of entertainment and literature and all that just at our fingertips. One stimulated, right? So it's really hard to commit to one, a three hour long podcast or a 20 hour long audio book. You know, you want to rather watch one minute TikToks or 30 second TikToks one after another, because that's way more easy and digestible. And you constantly have novelty and jumping around. It's great for a short attention span. And I think that has carried over into our relationships. You know, the day, Dating pool is about people that like to be with each other for about two fucking weeks and then they want to move on to the next thing because mm. when they start to get really close and deep with one person, it scares the fucking shit out of them. It's too much and they, they're just their brain is, you know, wanting something else. And yeah. and it's the same thing with our food. We have hyper palatable food. So it's just like we constantly want novelty. We want to be able to eat the fucking 20,000 ingredient shit that's that's processed in the store because it tastes so damn good and it makes our taste buds light up and it's like it doesn't matter it's not good for us it doesn't matter it's making us fat or sick or our skin deteriorate or our brain fucking eat itself you know none of that shit matters it's all about the pleasure the pleasure the pleasure the pleasure stimulation uh, you know neurochemical kick it's just all that it's all surface level bullshit and no one ever goes that deep with anything because no one ever has the focus and patience to do it. And I think the same thing, how people are, the spiritual people are with religion. I think the same thing about how people are about, you know, romantic relationships or even friendships. It's like you just are constantly psychopathically moving from one place to another, having a best friend that lasts for about a fucking month or two. And then you are on, on to a new best friend. I mean, it really is just people have lost their capacity for depth and it's a sad horrible thing to see and it's a really difficult thing to get people who are in that position to see it how can we combat that (sighs) 
I think you, if you are someone who recognizes all that, the best thing you can do is extend your hand in that way to people who you find value in and you see their struggle because you can't just tell people their ego will come after you. If you just tell this is what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, cause it, the, the, the only path to them fixing it is them realizing it and fixing it themselves. There is no, you telling yeah. them oh, what to do yeah, yeah, yeah. because if you do that, it makes, well, it makes them run away from you and it makes them curl inward and, um, Mm. Reality is the best medicine for the delusional. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's just a matter of, you know, offering your hand to them and and serving an example, uh, not just to them but to the world. S- serving an example and, and having these conversations. I think that's maybe the best you can do. I think it's just being your best as an individual and extending yourself in that way in as selfless of a manner as you can, because when you deal with people who are like that and they lash out at you, it does bring about your lower self and your, your ego to, to defend itself. And yeah. be like, wow, maybe what's wrong with you? And like, you know, yeah, and, no, and yeah, no. they push you back into that old way of yeah. being. I feel like I, I've been going for like, I don't know if it's even cheap laughs. It's just like, I don't know. I, th- Bullying is funny, but like I, I, I've definitely like punched down hard. You see me punch down. Well, well punching hard. down is hilarious. It I is mean, so it's because it's you're not supposed to do it. Yeah, it's, right. It's, so it's the, the only it's the reason, intrusive thought. Yeah, it's the only reason it's funny. It's because of how much social resistance there is to punching down. I mean, I remember doing. You know, it was around 2019 when I came back from LA and and oh, man. or the beginning of 2020 before the pandemic, Fuck. where I came back and and I was doing the Dead Crow mics and I just had some nights where I was just going hard on like retard jokes. Oh, I remember that. And I got in trouble. You know, <laughs> like it's like open mic used to always be the place where you can do whatever you want. And I, you know, I had some nights where it was just like I was really testing the crowd's limits to hear shit like that and. I remember saying Sully like starting off like because there was you know of course a mass shooting that happened recently mm-hmm. and I was just like you know it's so sick that people can do that like I just don't mm-hmm. understand so the, inside someone's mind where they think it's a, a, a good idea to go into a school and shoot up innocent young children in that way I mean like if it was a special ed class I'd understand that completely but <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah. I just and I just turned and I was just like don't you agree that we should be putting retarded people in cages and, mm-hmm. and euthanizing <laughs> oh like, just, like it was just going on oh my the gosh. crowd was just back and back uh, yeah, and back, back. Yeah. and it was yeah. yeah nothing redeeming about it. it was just saying like I miss you know what I, I will say this. how uncomfortable can I make this <laughs> how uncomfortable can I make this guy I will say uh, on behalf of uh, retards I uh, I watched a special needs kid his name was AJ shout out to AJ and uh, he loved boiled hot dogs mm. like you would like make him hot dogs after school yeah he loved hot dogs and he's like you, know, you don't grill it for him he's like AJ likes what he likes like I'd say that to like my girlfriend like like anytime like he thinks something's funny that I say or like uh I don't know. Like he likes a good song. Oh, AJ likes Kanye West. Like I put it on. Oh, you have a problem with Kanye, Caitlin? AJ likes him. Is there anything wrong with A? Like I just use him constantly as I got to stop. That's what I'm saying. I use him as like kind of like, oh, if you don't like that, you don't like the developmentally disabled. I kind of I pivot with people a lot. Like I pin their own shit against them. And I don't know why that makes me feel so much better. Hmm. Like when they're like, oh, were you on a date with a man? And I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with having a loving, embracing relationship with another person? And you're like, oh, so I was, so I have a, you know, I have a, I'm in a relationship and someone says, with a man? And I got a fucking mic or whatever. Yeah, sure. Whatever. You know what I mean? What? I What? Sorry, am I rambling too much? You just went from talking about like a retarded person like in boiled hot oh, dogs, no, okay. like you going on a date am with I a man. Am I speaking too fast? No, it could have just that could have been on me for not paying attention, okay. and, the, and whoever's no, listening no, no. to this right will, now, I is will like, speak. I will speak super slow for you, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank so, you, so, Hellison. <laughs> so, like, you know how? Uh. 
<laughs> you know how people like are like, you can't save her. T- it's you know like that hurts their feelings or whatever. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> like, like it was like, and then when they have interest in likes, like regular fucking human beings do, like boiled hot dogs, and you're like, you boiled hot dogs are gross. Well, like fucking AJ and I, AJ and I like them. You got some against AJ? I use whatever his likes are and I pin them against whoever, you know, because you know they feel they they feel this performative empathy. They don't really care to hang out spend time just generally enjoy the presence of someone who has developed they're having way more fun than us they're listening to victorious and kanye west in their fucking uh in their room just fucking playing tic tac whatever it is that i know what aj's doing Hmm. where am i going i go at it the same way when like people at like a show would you know when i say i'm in a relationship and then i'm trying to go into my joke and then someone says with a man and I pivot and I'd be like, yes. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. So now it's I the see same. Where, you know, I it's, it. Yeah. It's the same energy. I'm sorry I speak too fast, Cameron. This is a fault of mine. No, no. I think that that was me gen- like genuinely clocking lo- out. That's losing cool. steam of my ability to pay attention. No worries. And I'm sorry. That's what we're not. I can be bad. Fucking, no worries, buddy. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad we're not lost. I'm glad we're back on a track, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I uh, I like to pivot on people that like to outwoke me or out enlighten me or whatever. Mm. Be like, yeah, it's, yeah. If my girlfriend does have a penis, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, that's what. I, so I, when I would have jokes about having sex with retarded sure, yeah, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the crowd would get upset with yeah, me for it, yeah, yeah. I would I would woke turn on them and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Is there something? That's my sexuality. <laughs> yeah, is there something? I, yeah. I, I, are you judging me? Yeah. yeah. That feels so good. And like, that feels so good. Yeah, you guys are mad. You guys are mad at me for saying retard. I, I guess you guys don't know that they like being called that. Yeah. You wouldn't know because you've never had sex with one. <laughs> That's right, Daddy. They, they like harder. to have call sex. me a retard. <laughs> Hit it from the back, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they like they come too. You know what I mean? They I don't know if they have sex the same way. Spit in my mouth and call me a dummy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You did a whole thing about Harvey Weinstein having yes. sex with That was so... Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You've just... What's that on your stomach, <laughs> Harvey? Does he have, like, a pussy or something? I heard his dick is, like, really fucked up. Ooh, Harvey? Harvey, yeah. I've never heard anything. Yeah. Wonder what uh, ethnicity he is. Harvey Weinstein? Yeah. Oh. Palestinian, He's probably. Palestinian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with man. a name like Weinstein, that's very Palestinian. Yeah. I'll... I'll Al Weinstein. I thought, I thought you were going Alu Ala Akbar. Alu Alu Weinstein. Because, you know, it's like, it's just the. Al is just the in Arabic. Oh, okay. So it's Al Cameron Smith. It's the Cameron Smith. Yeah. Well, we learned th- so much today. We have. I think we had a great conversation. I'll probably have to cut like 50% of that out. <laughs> Definitely all that stuff about love. <laughs> the, the chi- and the Chinese. No. I'm you gonna, want to get the Chinese? In? I think that might be the only thing <laughs> that I might be in. the highlight. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a 10 second podcast. <laughs> just going to cut it. Welcome to the Creativity Theory <laughs> Podcast. Hey, <Ryan. laughs> this is, yeah. My, thank you for letting me ramble. If anyone could catch anything I've said, and, you know, if you, I don't know, man. This is, I generally wanted to come. And I, I would have just had a conversation with you, like on the phone. Like, I can talk to you for an hour. Yeah. Like, that's just how friendly we are with each other. Yeah. So. Well, I do want to say I've always appreciated you've been. Very kind friend to me. Thanks, man. Um, and you're you're one of those people that w- even when I've been really in really rough places mentally, um, you're there for me. That's nice. Man. And you always have very kind, complimentary, and supportive things to say to me. And the way that you show that support uh, and and admiration and ask questions to me that I can tell is genuinely from a place of admiration and curiosity. That that makes me feel really good. And um, yeah, I def- I appreciate your friendship for sure. You're a good dude. Thanks, man. And Enjoy those you. cookies. I, I love will. you too, buddy. All right. Well, that's right. been this episode of the Creativity Take Theory Thanks Podcast. For me on, man. Sorry, things got a little gay there in the end, yeah, they but did get, they did get real gay. <laughs> Later, brother.